Well, iPad 13 users, today we're gonna to talk about the Magic Keyboard and is it worth the upgrade? That was probably one of the biggest things on my mind as I was ordering my new iPad 13 is, do I need to bundle in the keyboard? I mean, in the last iPad, I've had for a number of years, I've used the Magic Keyboard more as a case for a number of reasons, which those small reasons why I used it more as a case versus actually a keyboard is why I'm doing this video today. The updates aren't huge, but they're significant if you are someone that's gonna be using this device more and more as a computer. The iPad 13, the Pro Edition, now has an M4 chip. So that's gonna open the possibilities for more computer processing power. You might be looking at this more as a computer than you would a tablet device. And that keyboard is gonna be essential to accomplish that. Now, when you tack on this device with a keyboard, you're north of $1,500, nearly $2,000. And when you compare it to a laptop, that is a big chunk of change. But today, guys, I'm gonna show you some of the improvements that I feel that are really important to this new edition of the Magic Keyboard that might make you want to bundle it in your next order. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the actual Magic Keyboard itself. Now, I have this positioned inside the iPad. And we're going to talk about the iPad a little bit later, but I want you guys to notice like how this looks from the edge. It looks really clean cut. I'm going to grab my 12 with the Magic Keyboard and compare them side by side for you so you can see that. But when I look here versus there, you can definitely see, and I'll flip it around so you can see the port because I think that really gives you an example, is this device here is a little bit thicker, not by much, with the keyboard. But here, the device is a little smaller, but with the keyboard, they're relatively about the same thickness. This is a hair thinner, but you'll notice that the edging seems really polished and really smooth because when you open up the Magic Keyboard, you're gonna find that this device now is a more of a solid, it's actually made out of metal, and that gives it a more finished build quality versus if you've been using the Magic Keyboard that was the previous launch, when you open up this one, you're gonna have that you know, kind of rubbery feel. Um, definitely great for a case, but you know, something that doesn't feel very commercial when you're typing on it. Now, the first thing that I noticed when I opened up these devices side by side is if I line the front, actually I'll flip these over and show you. I'm gonna stack the old iPad on top of the new one. And relatively speaking, I mean, they're within, well, they're within a few centimeters, if not millimeters. Heck, they're probably the exact same size. Nothing that I would notice unless I got a ruler out and we're not going to do that today. But if I open this up, the one thing that really stood out to me that wasn't discussed in any of the videos that I've seen is when I line the front of these devices up, you can see from a top down that the iPad here, the 12 version is so much closer to me than the 13 is. And I first thought to myself, well, if the iPad is pushed back, how is that going to adjust my viewing angle? How is that going to adjust the ability of me having this device on my lap? One of the things I really hated about using the Magic Keyboard with my 12 inch is whenever I was on a plane or I was on a couch or I was in a position where I needed to put my tablet on my lap like you would a laptop, I had to like literally put my hands down and push on the front of the tablet keyboard so that it would stay balance. And as soon as I lifted my hands up, poof, it would pop right over. I will tell you that with the new 13 inch, even though it's angled back almost like a solid three quarters of an inch, you would expect it to kind of flop over more. It actually doesn't. It actually feels more counterbalanced. And I do still have to put a little bit of pressure on the surface area or the front of the keyboard so it doesn't fall off my lap. Now I can lift my legs up a little bit and that brings the counterbalance forward, but that was one of the things I really noticed. The next thing I noticed is I always had, when I was typing, I always had this sense that I had to like push my hand underneath the iPad to reach some of these keys from time to time. Well, here with the number pad and the function row being up here, these numbers are, there's a good distance between the actual keyboard itself and the device itself. And that just spatially feels, it just feels better. It just feels more natural is the best way I can explain it. Versus here, I feel like I'm really up on top of the iPad. And when I'm doing any, you know, keyboarding, if I'm doing any word processing emails, there's something I want that little bit of space recognition 
uh, for that. So that to me was kind of a serious little adjustment that I thought made a big improvement. The next thing that I think is huge is we're gonna notice across the top of the keyboard is we have a function row. Now, I'll tell you, you might think, well, this is like standard, like 101 when it comes to keyboards. But in the previous model, it didn't have that function role. And some of the things that really bothered me is a lot of times I'd be listening to music, you know, headphones on or just listening to music and somebody would come into the room and talk to me. I would have to go into the control area of the iPad and actually hit the mute button or pause the video. I couldn't do that from the actual keyboard versus now I can literally mute, I can bring the volume up, bring it down, I can quickly lock the screen, which was something I couldn't do before. And I also have the ability to skip tracks and I have the ability to adjust the brightness. So many times I would have to go in and adjust the brightness of the screen and just something about when you're in more of a keyboard mode, you feel like everything should be at your fingertips. You shouldn't have to be going back to the device. The other thing that was really a nuisance for me was having to actually use the volume keys here versus now I can use these keys here on the function board itself. The other big thing you're gonna notice is just the overall size and imprint of this mouse pad. Now, when I first plugged in this mouse pad, one thing it was, it felt like it was tracking kind of slow, but I'm like, okay, well, every laptop that I have, I can go into the tracking settings and adjust the speed of that. So I went into the settings and I did that. And I thought, well, that's actually really awesome that I can adjust the speed. I am running both 17.5 iPad iOS on these devices. And I noticed one thing when I went into the settings of the iPad Pro 13 and just thought naturally to look up tracking because I wanted to change the speed of it, it was there. Then I thought, well, why haven't I ever done that on my 12 inch? Because well, one, I haven't really used it as a keyboard much because of these little things that just kind of are awkward to me. And I noticed in that build on this device, that tracking feature wasn't there. Now I can't confirm that that is a new hardware update to this keyboard, but it's definitely not available in the OS on the 12 inch. So that's something to keep in mind too. And I think that's because when you look at the overall size of this trackpad versus this trackpad, it's considerably larger. So as you're moving across the screen, you're not only going to make finer adjustments, but faster movements as you're browsing. And I especially notice this when I hook up a second monitor to this device. And that's also one of the big features about having a Magic Keyboard is the fact that you have that extra port available so you can hook up a hard drive, you can hook up another peripheral and still charge and maintain the device. And this trackpad on that larger display really was a big advantage for me because now I can do side-by-side -side computing and I have that trackpad that I can adjust the speed and really kind of get across the frame of the screen a lot faster. So that was overall my feelings on like the actual keyboard and the functionality and the form factor of it. Overall, if you're looking to purchase a new iPad and you're thinking about the Magic Keyboard, I will honestly tell you if you're going to be using this for more than just a tablet, the updates to this Magic Keyboard definitely make it worth it. I do feel between using a second monitor, being able to use this more as a laptop component, this keyboard definitely takes you one step further. It also gives you that ability so that when you're on your lap or you're using it remotely or on the go, it just seems to have more balance. And the build quality to me is considerably better with this new design of the iPad. And it fits in your bag just as your previous one did. As a matter of fact, it gives you a little bit more room because it is slightly thinner. If you took one thing from this video, do me a favor, hit the like button so we can share this with the community. And if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're thinking about using the Magic Keyboard with a new purchase of an iPad, for these reasons, I do think if you're thinking about using this in a computer setting, that this keyboard does have a lot of new updates and advantages that are gonna give you that opportunity. So with that being said, you guys have a good one.